Welcome to the uh, polyacetal lecture for thermoplastic resins. Polyacetal, and this is the structure of polyacetal shown here, is an engineering thermoplastic. This has often been used as a cost-effective substitute for traditional metals, like aluminum and steel. And this is characterized by the formaldehyde type recurring unit in the polymer backbone. This is also known as polyoxymethylene. So why? Polyoxy, and this is a methylene group, so that's why it's known as polyoxymethylene. Sometimes people call it polyformaldehyde because of that re uh, formaldehyde recurring uh, backbone unit. This was first studied uh, by Hermann Stottinger uh, in 1953, but uh, it was somewhat thermally un unstable, and this is something we will discuss a little bit further. So he really didn't do a whole lot of work with it. Uh, in 1960 is when polyacetal was commercially produced by DuPont and polyacetal homopolymer is known by the trade name Delrin. Selenese also introduced Selcon in 1962, and this is actually a copolymer of formaldehyde and small amounts of ethylene oxide. Uh, so it's not a homopolymer, but Selcon is a, is a copolymer and a homopolymer is Delrin. Uh, polyacetal production is 1.3 billion pounds per year. Uh, it is much lower than, say, your hundreds of thousands of pounds of polyethylene. Uh, polyacetal is consumed a lot in China and Western Europe and the United States, so a lot of first world countries. Polyacetal is probably uh, produced by Selenese to the most uh, uh, extent, 41% and then DuPont uh, is 19%. Other companies uh, produce it in lower uh, concentrations. Uh, polyacetal has uh, these following general properties and application areas. Uh, its structure and crystallinity lead to the following characteristics: it has very high creep resistance, uh, and good and toughness, and good chemical resistance. It's used in a variety of application areas, uh, like many other uh, thermoplastics: automotive, medical, home appliances, um, electrical and electronic, and then plumbing and irrigation. Polyacetal is a cationic polymerization of formaldehyde, and this is done in dry hexane solvent and you use triphenylphosphine catalyst. This is a very high molecular weight resin, so the number of repeat units is over 3,000. Uh, and this requires stabilization to avoid zipping. And what zipping is, is catalytic polymer degradation. Basically, it degrades back to, the, back to the monomer. And in this case, the monomer is formaldehyde. And the way to prevent that is to cap with acetic anhydride. And this is acetic anhydride shown here. And that prevents us that zipping uh, or degradation to monomer. So here is your homopolymerization reaction. It is done in the presence of an initiator at 100 uh, to 110 Celsius. Again, this is formaldehyde. This is your monomer. That's why it's called polyformaldehyde. And this produces the polyacetal repeat unit. Polymerization occurs readily below 110 Celsius, but above 110 Celsius, the polymer degrades or unzips. And that's why uh, the instability during polymerization has become kind of an issue. And when it zips, it, go, it depolymerizes to the formaldehyde monomer. Formaldehyde is not known to be nice uh, in terms of its uh, health effects on the body. So this is kind of an issue, and that's why you, you use the capping with acetic anhydride. You can also do a, a ring opening polymerization of polyacetal uh, copolymer. So you, uh, in the you take formaldehyde, and in the presence of acid, you can get this kind of, uh, sort of this sort of structure. Then you take uh, some ethylene oxide and you copolymerize this together. So you get this sort of uh, ethylene uh, functionality and copolymerized with your polyacetal functionality. So this is what how you produce the uh, copolymer version as opposed to the homopolymer. Polyacetal uh, has high crystallinity, therefore it is somewhat translucent or opaque. It has high tensile strength and high compression strength, high creep resistance, and high dimensional stability. Uh, it doesn't elongate to the same degree as nylon. Uh, it's more like 25 to 75 percent, uh, but it has it is very, very strong. Uh, it has high service temperatures. Its TG is negative 50, but its TM is 176 degrees Celsius. Uh, its heat deflection temperature is 124, uh, and its critical use temperature is 90 degrees Celsius. Again, you want to keep it below 110 for sure to produce any of that catalytic degradation to monomer. It does have low moisture absorptivity, so 0.29% in 24 hours, and does not require drying, but oftentimes uh, it is dried uh, for feedstock uniformity. Um, 
a lot of times people just get in the habit of drying engineering thermoplastics and they do so with polyacetal as well. So uh, it just keeps it keeps your feedstock nice and uniform. This has very good ductility uh, for sawing, drilling, and riveting. The material itself doesn't crack. It has good solvent resistance, things like gasoline, alcohol, halogenated solvents, and oil and grease. It has excellent insulating properties as well. But it has problems. Uh, it is very crystalline, so it cannot be easily solvent welded. It can be attacked by strong oxidizing agents. It has somewhat UV light susceptibility, and it does what's called chalking. In other words, the surface after it's exposed to UV light for a while just kind of has this white kind of film on the surface. And you can load it with pigment, but it doesn't always help. Uh, sometimes a UV absorber and a UV stabilizer will help with that. In other words, carbon black or titanium dioxide with a hindered amine light stabilizer. Uh, but not, it doesn't always work so, so well. Uh, it is not self-extinguishing. It is very slow burning. Uh, and it has low smoke generation, but it's not truly self-extinguishing. The big issue with this is that it gets hung up in hot processing equipment. And when it gets hung up, it dips and depolymerizes to give off formaldehyde. So you really have to eat, well ventilate any area that you're uh, processing polyacetal and you have to purge it really effectively because if you heat that back up again, especially over that uh, processing temperature, you're going to get zipping and formaldehyde all over the place, which is not good. Uh, injection molding, uh, polyacetal can be produced by injection molding. Extrusion, rotational molding. There are special grades for injection molding, special grades for extrusion, uh, blow molding, and there is a comp compression grade, which is also a special grade of polyacetal. The application areas is it serves as a replacement in a lot of a lot of products for metals, so aluminum, steel, brass, bronze, copper, or other plastic. And when you replace metal parts with uh, plastic, you uh, reduce your industrial noise. You don't have plastic parts, me oh, sorry, metal parts uh, rattling against each other, and you also eliminate the need for metal lubricants as well. So uh, also you reduce the weight significantly. Polyacetal is also good for small volume applications uh, and applications uh, in which it's uh, exposed to a lot of moisture because it doesn't take up a lot of moisture. So shower heads, garden hose nozzles, irrigation gates, pumps, faucets, things like that. Applications that make it uh, that the solvent resistance is good for are things like carburetors, pipe fittings, valve fittings, fuel component systems, and its dimensional stability lends it to things like small gears, cams, tool handles, and zippers. It is also used in medical and dental applications, including artificial heart valves, artificial hip joints. There's also Dental-D or Delrin-D uh, that is used in removable dentures or in partials. Uh, this is a good alternative to the chrome uh, cobalt dentures. It has good mechanical strength and is very good biocompatibility. It also has a, a enhanced aesthetic properties. Uh, metal looks like metal in your mouth and it's uh, a hint that maybe you don't have all your natural teeth. So if you can uh, have any sort of dental composite or material that looks more like natural teeth or gums, it's a plus. Uh, Delrin uh, 300 CP is a new form of polyacetal. And polyacetal itself is, is expensive, and this uh, new form is more cost effective. It also has high impact resistance at low temperatures. It retains high stiffness and strength, relatively low molt viscosity, and um, a combination of strength and ease of processing. Uh, application areas that have potential are things like automotive components, fasteners, clips and springs, and sport and leisure products. So uh, when you get into the upper level of engineering thermoplastics, you do get growth areas for other products and um, uh, as also, also for uh, blends or copolymers that have better processing or lower costs. This concludes polyacetal. We will move on from here to uh, polyphenylene sulfide and we will get into the sulfur and oxygen containing uh, aromatics polymer.